architecture. It's such a diverse subject. When we see these wonderful buildings around us and monuments, we wonder how do they get built so easily and who does them? But are they built so easily? Well, an architect goes through a series of learning in his five years of education. In fact, it takes a decade and a more sometimes to understand the true essence of architecture. He learns about basic design, about acoustics, about lighting, about climatology, about sun patterns and wind. And then he understands about building technology. What are the services that go into it? Like fire safety, plumbing, structures. Putting all these things together, it's not so easy. It takes years for him to understand, to practice and to experiment. But even then, why would you give an architect a certain building to be built or designed? Demystifying Architecture by Kamal Kamaraju To help you understand this, let me start with one of the basic components of any building. Windows. When you look at a window, what do you think of? Curtains, drapes, a view or basically a shape of a window. But do architects think like that about windows? Let me explain. A window is nothing but a puncture in a wall. The shape, the size and where you locate this puncture determines the mood of the space and that is determined over a series of conversations with the client. This puncture is essentially for light, ventilation and a view. So if you have a window in the center, what you're doing is you're making the focus to the center and you're also making the background that is what's beyond the wall to become the foreground and the foreground is dull so usually we name it as a negative field and what's framed is a positive field now let's see what happens when you move the window to the corner you immediately make the end user walk towards the corner so your focal point shifts it has a more energy in this space and where do you now find the negative field it is all over here and the light is now falling here so this becomes the for positive field so if if you have any wallpaper or cladding this gets highlighted now let's look at this in a plan so in a room, if you have a window in the center, this is the negative space and this is the positive space. So the light is focused all over here. So when you are doing your lighting inside the room, you have to be more careful how to light here, light up the space here. But if you have children, do, you, do children like uh, dark corners? So what happens when you have, you know, designing a children's room? Usually in children's room, I would prefer that the windows are in the corners. This, what it does is it eliminates any dark corners and makes the room more healthy and more visible to everyone. Of course, you can have a painting here and, you know, your bed is oriented there and all that. Also, one most important thing is that uh, many people put their furniture you know uh, aligned to the window that is if they have a window here they put a bed here this is the wrong way you know you should not do this because the moment you have a window here how do you change the curtain how do you move the curtain so as an architect when we are designing rooms or bedrooms we tend to remove areas where 
there is such clutter. So these are small tips that we usually follow. But coming back to the windows and their shape and size of it. Oh, they come in many sizes and shapes, but yeah. So if you have, what, what will happen if you, you know, increase the, increase the size of the window. So you now have a window which was in the center. Now if you start moving from the floor to the, to the ceiling, they usually called the French windows. So what happens is the negative field is totally diminished and everything becomes positive as in so the whatever is there in the background is now the foreground and there is no uh, foreground in its remote so the, the background is now highlighted so this is used in many scenic places uh, any resorts or tourist uh, places or even uh, you know sky rises when you have a, a nice horiz uh, horizon and what we usually think of is what are we framing so we're framing the sky and also the the ground so so you see everything from uh, the sky to the ground so this is what uh, a, a large window does now if you have a series of windows why would you use a series of windows like there's a wall here and you have a series of windows this basically is used to um, make a movement it depicts a movement so you can have uh, windows lined up or you can have a clutter of windows like that so dispersing so you create a, a certain energy and also make uh, your eye of the uh, user in that room to move now uh, I also want to show you another wonderful way the window helps us that is if you have a window from top to bottom in a corner what it is doing is it is telling you that there is space beyond so if you observe this is a space that's beyond and it will eventually make the room larger so it, it is telling you that you can you know uh, there is a privacy private areas beyond this wall and uh, the way to reach out is there now what happens if you do it in the center what happens the same opening if it's in the center you're basically saying that there's no, uh, not much privacy beyond this wall and uh, you know you can move from this after seeing this, uh, uh, this space you can move to the next space. Now windows are also used to divide two planes. If this is a ceiling and this is a flooring, if you have a window like that it's called a ribbon window so if you have a window like that it is dividing the um, you know this plane to that plane so you can divide planes like that and then um, this will make the ceiling to be highlighted so if you have large high ceilings to make it more lighter you usually use these kind of windows and help attain a sense of uh, uh, lightness to the space so uh, and also if, if you have even sh uh, shorter spaces and if you feel that it's, it's feeling claustrophobic and you can't uh, have a, a view outside you still need light so uh, sometimes windows are used only for light sometimes used for windows for light and ventilation or you know uh, for for a scenic uh, appreciation so these are the various methods in which windows are seen so look around you observe the windows
and if they are doing anything that what I have explained or more, thank you architect. If it's not, it's time to get a good architect. That's all for now. Hopefully next time I share much more wonderful experiences and thoughts on architecture. Until then, goodbye. Please don't forget to like, comment and share if you like this video. And of course, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.